first off, I think we'll have a navy blue, blue pram. I seem to remember when I was uh, a little babby that I had something that was navy blue. I'm, I've put masking fluid on here. When I rub that off, hopefully I'll have the outline of at least part of the tyres because they tend to be white. I've not made any attempt, and nor am I going to, to paint in any of the spokes. It would look far too overworked if I do that. It always looks far better, and the same with the bike. It's a simple blue-grey we've left for the washing can. We'll put some shadow on these at the end. Really, you're only needing to, to sort of paint the, the frame like that. What we're going to do is not try and paint all of the wheel. We're going to leave some of it here and there as if the sunlight was shining off it and reflecting off it. The same with the handlebars. Right now, incidentally, you might have noticed with these last few tutorials, I've not bothered mentioning what colours I'm using because A, you should be a little bit more familiar with the colours anyway, but it really doesn't matter because these sort of items and, and a lot of the others and the figures and animals by and large can be in all sorts of different colours or, or shades of colours that you might prefer to use. Now I've actually mixed permanent rose with raw sienna and you can see it's given a pretty good bright red. So as an alternative to cadmium red if you prefer not to use it or you haven't got it in your paint box or you haven't got a bright enough crimson then using the colours we've got there's a good alternative. In fact just for comparison purposes there's cadmium red at about the same strength. Yeah it's a bit brighter but it's not at all bad this sort of colour. Just now painting the hint of the interior of the foam box here. No details again. There's the end of the, the bar. I suppose I, I've missed that little bit out. That should come down like that. Into, I'm fiddling now. I'll best off leave that because otherwise I'll fiddle it and do too much. That's fine. If it's placed in the right context, if you're worried and it's, that it doesn't show up enough, don't forget, if you place it in the right context on a lawn, particularly if somebody's pushing it, then people are going to get quickly get the idea of what it's supposed to be. This is another one where personally I just start off like that and then you can see it's very very simple. That'll do for the baggage, that's fine. Not going to do any more than that. This will tend not to have much shadow because it's it's sitting in long grass. Perhaps just put a little bit of shadow on that. A little bit of shadow as if the shadow is coming from a slight angle. I'm messing around with some of the, the dark colour. You can see the way and I've done the same with the red. And it's just lifted a sort of a, a, a dull sheen out of the uh, pillar box rather than a highlight. Right now even though that's taken a lot of paint out I'm quite happy with that because you see how it's given a very bright uh, sunlit atmosphere to this side of the post box and the real colour, the base colour, is actually shown much more readily on the shadow side. So if you think you've taken too much paint out from something at times, trying to get a highlight, just step back a bit, let it dry off and see it might turn out to be just the thing that was needed. So there's just a few ideas for bits and bobs to go in your picture, to add a little bit of interest in one corner of the picture or maybe to form part of a focal point. There's literally thousands of different bits and pieces that you could put in. I've just given you some ideas how to draw these to get you started. But hopefully it'll provide the springboard for you and an inspiration for you to pick up your own items and to include those in your landscape paintings.